Honest, Jay Nowak. Oh yeah. A pleasure to me all at last, and welcome back to another installment of Mark of the Line on HJN. And let's just say that with all the new stuff I've been able to come up with lately, as I've said before, creative input is not going to be very big, especially because I'm getting pretty darn close to the very end of the season itself. And while HJN Season 1 has pretty much been a blast, I pretty much had to come up with hundreds of new topics to talk about for Season 2 and 3 and 4 and onwards. Until, well, I decide when I'm going to be ending the series. So here we got ourselves number 740. Yeah. Number 740 is specifically going to be about another Italian-based company known as Maserati. Yeah, if you're very familiar with the Quattroporte, Ghibli, Gran Turismo, and then of course a more recent flex fueler type vehicle out there, which I can't really be sure what its name is supposed to be nowadays, then Maserati is pretty much what I'm talking about. If you're also very familiar with its logo, which is essentially based off of King Poseidon's trident, then well, that's another thing that you can probably figure out in order to get more familiar with the brand itself. But Maserati is a bit more than just that. It's a nice variety of vehicles is one thing, it's amazing color schemes is also another thing, and it's pretty handy dandy decorative interior and exterior work is also another good aspect to keep in mind. These are in fact, well, your average sort of sporty sedans or coupes, convertible rooftops and roadsters and all that good stuff. But Maserati, again, being an Italian-based company, there's really a lot more I could potentially talk about for its existence. The thing is, it sure has had quite a bit of a backstory behind it, with some good and not-so-good quirks put together. But Maserati did not necessarily start off very well, because it wasn't certainly not, not like many other companies way back in the day, when Mostly their beginnings are fondly remembered no matter what. Chevrolet, Ford, and Buick, and Cadillac pretty much had themselves some great times back in the day. And even to this day, we can never pretty much go far without even mentioning the names of these companies. Specifically because of the kind of history that we were taught like that as kids. Maserati, of course, is not necessarily very big. Mostly because it's not even close to being as old as some of these companies which is justifiable by most pictures, but the thing is about Maserati and its history, it doesn't go as far back as many of them. So the thing is, it's something that not everybody is likely to remember, especially if you can really, really piece together the kind of good memories that you've sought after for so many years, and then of course have, well, a lot of new things taken up. I'm just kind of being a bit like off the rails at this point, so I'm sorry about that. But again, Maserati is a good choice out there. I wouldn't really ultimately call it the best choice because, well, a lot of people tend to look for as many qualities in a good vehicle as possible. If there are, in fact, as many categories that are met, including sportiness, style, practicality, compatibility, and functionality, as well as durability and, well, long-lasting things about it, then, well, that's pretty much how people can all agree on to find the perfect car. And there are indeed a lot of examples of cars that happen to meet all sorts of qualifications that would be necessary. The Ford Taurus is a good example. The Toyota Camry and Corolla are also good examples that meet these qualifications at all times. And then, of course, you've got others out there, like the Buick Park Avenue and the Mercury Milan, even though that company's been defunct. So, nonetheless, though, Maserati still does have itself a good share of having these qualifications met, which is kind of the reason why you can actually find these around on the roads. A bit rare of a sight, but certainly not as rare as something like a Ferrari or a Lamborghini. This is one of the only options that you could probably get, other than Fiat, other than Lancia, 
way back in the day, that is. Of course, if you were hoping to get an, an Italian car in general, then well, those would probably be some of your only options by today's standards. So, that's just kind of what that's all about. But, I will say for sure that it's still a great company nonetheless. Its quality and its work is certainly something that will definitely be remembered for a very long time. As long as they're still around even, that will also be pretty helpful. But for now, I guess it's probably about time that i got to go on ahead and start, well, talking about other things here and there, which can wait. Because i got to recover from this common cold, so. Ah, oh, man. If you want to see more, go down to my channel, then make sure that you like, subscribe, comment, follow me on social media, and stay on the Hollywood side.